Um, quarter to seven this morning, and our shopping habits have changed massively during the pandemic. And one of the big differences was the growth in so-called buy now, pay later products. Yep, the government, though, wants to bring in new rules to make sure people don't take on too much debt. Nina has the very latest for us. Morning. Yes, good morning. And um, so buy now, pay later. It's a good opportunity for some people to split payments when they can't afford it at the time, but it does come with a bit of risk. Good morning. Yeah, the growth in online shopping came with a massive growth in buy now, pay later, and they do exactly exactly what they say on the tin. You get your hands on it now, but pay for it down the line. Uh, now, this can be a really brilliant way to borrow, uh, but they've been operating with different rules to credit cards. And back in February, the regulator said that urgent changes are now needed. We will speak with the boss of one of the biggest industry uh, lenders, uh, Klarna, shortly about what that means. But first, here are some of the pros and cons of buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay later. A simple idea. Get what you want straight away and delay or maybe even split the cost. You owe the payment provider rather than the retailer. But it isn't for everyone. No, because I don't like to get in debt. No. <laughs> no, I've got a credit card and I think that's it. that's it for me. Thank you. I think it's more comfortable to, uh, to pay at the same time. No, because that scares me. It's like debt. It's a, <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. But with no interest charges, it can be used as a free way to borrow. I'm an impulsive buyer, so I just buy it and then see if I like it. If I don't like it, I just send it back. So I like it. It was, I guess, easier just to split it over the free payments. It's easy to get um, refunds and send stuff back. And it's like, it's no hassle, if you know what I mean. So you're not like thinking, oh, I've got to wait for money to come back in so I can buy more stuff. So, yeah, I use that quite a lot, to be fair. Our use of buy now, pay later products quadrupled over the pandemic. We spent £2.7 billion using services like Klarna, Clearpay and Layby last year. The vast majority of that cash went on fashion and footwear and three quarters of users are women. So what's the catch? Well, the financial regulator is worried that people are encouraged to spend more, rack up unseen debts and then face difficult and expensive repayments. Alice is a personal finance expert who's campaigned for these companies to face tougher rules. I came across young people as young as 19 uh, for whom buy now pay later was their first interaction with credit and they'd racked up significant sums, several thousand, as close to £10,000 worth in some cases, across multiple buy now pay later providers. Um, and obviously there's questions as to whether that should be um, possible. Um, and of course, you know, we can argue personal responsibility all we like, but I think in order to make good decisions, the perils of bad decisions also need to be, need to be made clear. If I can pay for it in a couple of months, I kind of push it to the back of my head. I've done it numerous times before and I've never had an issue with it, but on this occasion, um, I didn't make the payment in time. Definitely brings the trolley, shopping trolley, um, to a higher amount each time. I was not keeping up with it and I was delaying my rent payment and other essential bills so I had to get it all together and stop it. One of the biggest criticisms of these firms has been the celebrity and influencer driven advertising, selling the product as a positive payment platform rather than debt. I am pleased to say that I think now by now pay later firms or some of them have been listening to these criticisms and I have seen that things are starting to improve, particularly around marketing and promotions. So it's great to see that. I think now the attention is on what the regulation actually looks like. I was just remembering one of my first job interviews where I bought a dress on a store card and put off the payment for a while. If that option wasn't available to me, I wouldn't have been able to buy the dress and feel good in the interview. So it's important, isn't it? in a sense, to have that availability. Absolutely. I think for the sake of financial inclusion and ensuring that we're not excluding people from the access to credit, I welcome these products. And actually, in many cases, I think they can be a better alternative to high interest cards, payday loans, uh, whatever. I think absolutely. But better doesn't necessarily mean that they should be exempt from regulation. So I think there's a, there's a balancing act there. The regulators called for affordability checks and more support for customers who are struggling to repay. The government says it will act as soon as it can and the details will be crucial for both how we shop and the future of companies like Klarna. 
Let's speak then to the global boss of the Swedish firm Klarna, probably the most well-known buy now, pay later company. Sebastian Simiakowski joins us from London. Welcome to the UK. Good to see you. Um, as of today, Klarna will be rolled out a lot more widely. Tell us how that's going to happen and where you make your money from that. Sure. I mean, what we're launching today is the ability uh, with the usage of our app to use Klarna everywhere. So up until now in the UK, you have been limited to use Klarna only on the websites that are currently offering it. But with this new solution, you'll be able to use our browser and use it everywhere. So it really becomes a much better alternative to using credit cards. And it's still going to be as it has been with zero interest and zero fees. One of the criticisms of Klarna uh, that came from the review was that it is credit, but it doesn't necessarily appear to be so, that young people are taking on this debt, but the messaging at that point of purchase is not clear enough. Yeah, I'm, that one I'm a little bit confused by because like, I've reviewed all of our uh, screen and presentations, and while there's always things that you can improve and so forth, I, I've, I've struggled to find a consumer myself who said that they used our service and didn't understand that they would eventually have to pay for the goods that they bought. So, um, so I think I'm I'm a little bit confused. Maybe there's other reasons why that has come from. But I, well, I think some, that that one. Of, some of the uh, one one of the young people that Alice, the campaigner who had in our piece, spoke to said, um, "I ended up spending a thousand pounds without realizing it. The main problem is they don't scare you enough. All they wanted was my name and date of birth. So it didn't feel like I was taking on something that was a big responsibility. And the bottom line is these are young people. They're, they're buying lots of goods very quickly and maybe their first experience of using credit. Yes. So first and foremost, like the average age of people using Klarna is 33. Um, we have uh, reports from our agency, credit agencies that shows that 93 percent of the people using our products are near prime. And so it's not entirely accurate. Unfortunately, there will always be some people. But I think uh, people want to describe our customers as like vulnerable that, you know, shop too much. Uh, we have 14 million users. And when I talk to them, I hear a very different story. They say, look, why would I use a credit card? Credit cards is massive interest rates is trying to trick me into revolve is trying to uh you know is for all of my spending this is much better i use debit card for my normal purchases and then occasionally i use a service like Klarna when i think i need credit or when credit is something that helps me in that specific situation i think i mean in britain we have more credit cards than we have adult people like this uh this solution is a better solution for people because it is free of interest it doesn't have additional uh, late fees it's not trying to make money that way and so it's better for the consumer using this so why not then allow affordability checks at the point of purchase so you can see whether the consumer has taken on debt with other companies because at the moment that doesn't happen we found that on average a Klarna user will have debt with eight or nine different companies and you don't necessarily know about that is that responsible so we first and foremost we are for regulation and we fall for regulation and i think there are definitely some good ideas like potentially uh, checking whether people have debt with other companies and so forth and i mean unfortunately currently the credit bureau agencies in the uk doesn't allow us to update that data and make that available and that could but, be but you would welcome that if, if sorry you would welcome that if it could happen yes i would but one thing that is also important to understand is that our underwriting looks very different like a credit card you get a limit for you know, a thousand pounds, you can go out and spend it and unfortunately get in the full depth of it if you use all of it. With Klarna, you get a, a limit for a specific purchase. So you get like for a hundred pounds and you make one purchase. And if you show that you as a consumer or user of Klarna treat that credit responsibly, then slowly we increase uh, the availability of it. So it's very different. And if you look at our overall loss rates, we're below credit cards and we have lower loss rates than credit cards. But so that, but that consumer could be in, works. that consumer could be in the same situation with several other companies. And, and, and the MP Sala Creasy said, you have no idea whether somebody isn't eating or is missing rent payments in order to pay off their buy now, pay later debts, because you don't have a whole picture of who this consumer is. Uh, I think that's not accurate if you look at our loss rates. I mean, if that case, our loss rates would be much higher, right? So if you look at the overall outcome here, you can see that actually um, a lot of people do pay on time and do, I mean, 40 million users, people in the UK use this product and use it well and treat well. And then unfortunately, there will be instances where that doesn't happen. But again, in those instances, you'll maybe end up with owing us £100 rather than on a credit card, £2,000. So there's, there's differences. And I think the other important aspect here is that like, I believe that credit in some situations is a good thing to use. Now, the question then is what kind of credit uh, should you be using? There's a lot of alternatives out okay. there. And I think the one that are the cheapest and 
the best for the consumer and, and doesn't try to trick you into a lot of things is better. I think it's in, in that perspective, you have to look at the product. And that's what our consumers are saying. Why would I have a credit card? Credit cards are the most effective redistribution of wealth in the UK. They take people, take money from the poor and give it to the rich through loyalty programs. Like a lot of young consumers don't want to deal with that. They don't want to be part of that okay. redistribution. Okay, uh, Sebastian Simokovsky, uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, government consultation begins on how to regulate buy now, pay later soon. As ever, it's great to hear from you if you've had good or bad experiences of using apps like Klarna. Dan and Louise. Yep, Nina, thank you very much.